Welcome here to the Blacksmith. How's everybody doing today? Hey, this is like an old school way back kind of video. We're gonna try to make a tool to make a super fast pair of tongs. Here's the problem, right? Haven't had enough time to make a pair of tongs. So we've been using every pair of tongs. These are all garbage. This used to be to hold round bar, not anymore. The point is, these tongs have all been messed because all we do now is make axes pretty much. And that requires a very specific type of tong, especially when we take the train rail and make it in a billet under the power hammer. A pair of tongs that hold blocks of steel under the power hammer are, uh, they sometimes get mangled up. So a while ago I've, I made a video on trying to make a pair of tongs to fight back on that. This was the pair of tongs I made in a video to try to be like the mother of all tongs for working the blocks under the power hammer. Problem with this one is, it's like a pair of pliers. This distance needs to be way greater so that you can accommodate thin to thick chunks without your hands getting too wide. So I have used this pair of tongs basically not at all. The other problem is that I just don't have time. I just don't have like, I'm not a very fast tong maker, believe it or not. So it takes hour, two hours to make a pair of tongs, beautiful sculpted, and then it just gets destroyed and mangled under the power hammer. So today I'm gonna to try to set on a path to make a jig that's gonna make a robust, strong, functional pair of tongs. It's not gonna look good, but the hope is that I can like literally bang this thing out in a couple minutes and then just have a whole bunch of these. So if the tongue gets messed up or something, we just throw it away, keep going, you know? This is extremely focusing on utility and functional. I'm gonna start by uh, redesigning this pair of tongs because I think the jaw function of this is pretty good. It's just that it wasn't long enough. Let's say this was my new pair of tongs. <clears throat> I'm going to take the half pair of tongs and actually squish it into a block of steel. And then I'm hoping I can take that block of steel and use it as a die to just squish steel in. Comes out with a pair of tongs with some flashing on it. Grind that off, put it together, keep going. That's the plan today. We're going to give it a go. Hopefully it works. Let's get right to it. Thanks for being here. I can't tell you why I think this. Like I've, I'm having a hard time rationalizing this myself, but I'm actually going to just do stock removal to make this master tong blank. Here's the part, rough ground in, and um, I'm thinking that I'm probably going to have to taper this in here. This is hot. Can I pick it up? Ah, Timothy! It's so thick on the end here, and that's an issue if you're working material that's thinner than that because you'll hit your pair of tongs into the power hammer. So I'm probably going to have to taper that in, which is fine. We can do that. I'm going to go to the belt sander and try to clean it up a little bit. So wet out here, it's crazy. Hey, Martin! Can I use a belt sander? Martin, these are looking awesome. Oh, I wish my hands weren't so grubby. I could touch this. Look at these handles. So the sheath isn't done yet. Carefully move that so you can see the head. This is our 1919 Hudson Bays. Number 23, this one is. They all get the serial number under there. This is made from 1919 train rail. These, these are gonna be available on my website. Put the link down below this video. And this is actually gonna be the last of the Hudson Bay style axe for the foreseeable future. So if you've been on the fence about trying to get one, get it now because 
I don't know if we're coming back to these. Boy, those look good though. I also got to show you, I don't know in this video if I'm going to get to show you, got the wood boxes coming and stuff, but we ship them all out now in wood boxes, which is a super, makes me feel really good when I put it in the mail because I know you're going to get it and it looks really cool. Anyways, if you're interested in one of those, take a look on my website. But uh, I guess I can't really use the belt sander, can I, Martin? That, that wouldn't be a problem there, a pile of sawdust, right? That wouldn't light the whole thing up. I'll figure something else out, I guess. Do you have anything you want to uh, tell your biggest fans today, Martin? I don't know. Anything? Okay. We'll see you in the next one. Putting you on the spot. I always put you on the spot. All right, well, thanks for your great work here. We love it. I was actually all set up to start cutting the taper on there. You can see how I lined it up, the chalk line here. But what I'm thinking about is I might just hold off in doing that because I could theoretically push this into a block of steel to make a tone like this and then if that doesn't work out I can trim it and do that and then I can have the taper but I can't go back so I think what we're going to do is just try it like this see what happens and then reevaluate. Martin's got the burrito tongs here. It's critical that they are able to hold a two and 15 16 diameter round burrito. Get that going good. All right, I'm gonna enjoy this and we'll pick it up on the other side. Here's the part, push down, it's looking pretty good. The only thing that happens a little bit is that the edges get sloped and I guess you would have to do some pre-work and then come in with the final tool just at the end and do a light squish if you wanted to eliminate that. Because of the way we're going with this part, I'm hoping that that's really not going to be any issue at the end of the day because we're just going to be grinding that stuff out. The other thing I'm not sure about is if I needed to leave room, you know, if I need to recess this for the flashing, because it's gonna be material that would come out the edge, but we're just gonna try it like this, see what happens. If that doesn't work, we'll do some grinding, relieving work, but uh, it's a pretty satisfying thing to squish a piece of steel into a piece of steel. Just threw some pre-shape on this part. We'll see if that works. So it actually didn't work good enough. I, I didn't get enough material right across here. So we're gonna have to do a little more pre-shape. actually turned out pretty good. It's a little bit not touching the die fully in a couple spots, but I, I honestly think we can make that work. I'm
So this worked pretty good with the round bar here. This is inch and a quarter round bar and just squished it in. Here's the two pieces made up. Quick and dirty tongue, guys. This isn't something you bring to the party to show your friends. Let's drill these holes out, see how it fits together. So I wanted to show you a couple things that I've done differently on these tongs just to make them stronger and more robust. Because this is so big in here, I went to a 3 8 hole, so we're gonna put a 3 8 rivet in there. Just normally I do like quarter inch or five sixteen. Is this corner in here is not crispy. That's intentional because if it's really sharp, that can be a fracture point where the tongue will break after enough vibration. And then what I did to compensate to make this work is I actually rounded this edge up here. It can ride with that radius shoulder because this will ride on that. Hopefully that makes sense. Here's the finished pair of tongs. I want to show you something I was just playing with that is actually a problem. So the shoulder in here, I just kind of guessed on that to where to put that angle, but look what happens with the pair of tongs. It opens to this point and then stops. Typically on a pair of tongs made to hold a specific type of steel, that's not an issue. The problem with a pair of tongs like this that go on a power hammer, let's say I'm working this piece of steel here and it's bulging out at the bottom, and I'm holding it like that. As the pair of material grows thicker, it'll hit the end of this pair of tongs, right? Like that's as far as it'll open. And if you don't know that, you keep squishing it. The power of the hammer squishing the steel will either jam the tong, or it could actually start to bend and break it. So there's two ways to go around that. Either make this shoulder here, and, and actually also it's very limiting. That's the range of motion. But because you have both hands on this typically, <clears throat> or can under the power hammer, you, you want more motion than that because you might be grabbing a thick to thin piece, right? So there's two ways to go about it. Either this shoulder gets opened up a lot more, so you have bigger range, or the other option would be to go to flat, kind of flat bar scenario where they run parallel and there's no shoulder. So that would look like cutting this out in here. That was something I was thinking about going for in the beginning, but I kind of like the thicker part here. It gives you some options. So for this pair, I'm gonna take the rivet off. I'm gonna open that shoulder up quite a bit, like considerably. And then we're gonna try the pair of tongs. If it works good, I can go back to my master, which is right here. And I could fix that essentially and then re-push it into a block and then we'd be off to the races. So it's testing and tuning here. I can't even tell you how that made it so much better. It feels so much better when you're not restricted. So that, that, that's the max right there, right? But I'm okay with that. I think at that point, I'll just have another pair of tongs that will be able to do the wider sections from there on out. That's a good range, you know? And uh, let's, uh, let's give it a run for the money here and see, see how it works. This is some of our production work we have on the go. So these down here are gonna be these hooks, making for a company for lock and mortise. It's hard to tell, but these are actually bronze right now. Those have quite a bit of work to be done with them. But anyways, today, this is what I have to do. So these are actually candle bases. And maybe you've seen these before. This is a company in Vancouver called Barter Design. 
and these get upset. This is inch and a half round bar. And so this is where that pair of tongs is gonna be critical. I've made probably over a thousand of these things and those pickup tongs are just the sweetest thing for this. So let's get the hammer running and try that pair of tongs out. Between that hammer being all tuned up and tight, that pair of tongs is the best session I've had on those candle bases. That feels so good for all the hard work we've put in to have things come together and actually make a better product. The tongs, they're actually really good. They, they, the handles feel good. The control is better than the last pair that I like, really like. I didn't have such a beast of a employee around here. I'd probably make them a little bit lighter. It's, uh, I'm pretty stoked about it. We're gonna, uh, I'm gonna make a couple more pairs, make them for different sets, and then maybe make a little bit of a lighter pair for work at the anvil because you don't need that girth up there. So anyways, I think it's a success. I'm gonna set down now. It'll be, I'll just do it off camera because you've seen the whole thing. We'll make a couple pairs and set us up. Good to go. Thanks for watching. I have, I think it's about 10 1919 Hudson Bay axes like available for immediate shipping. And then that's gonna be it for the Hudson Bay. So if you've been eyeing one up or thinking about it, that you'd like to get one, this is your last chance. Thanks for watching, super appreciate it. Let me know if I missed anything obvious with the, uh, no, don't let me know, I don't wanna know. I'm pretty happy with this. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one. And until then, keep the forge lit, eh? Over and out.